it's the centerpiece of every Euro anesthesia meeting and important in highlighting the biggest issues of the day in anesthesiology. Well, this year's Sir Robert McIntosh lecturer is former ESAIC President Professor Daniela Filipescu. Professor Filipescu, many thanks for joining us. I wonder if you could start by telling us what is the title of your lecture and how did you come to choose it? The title of the lecture is Safe and Diverse Celebrate Our Strengths. And I was inspired uh, by Sir uh, McIntosh, uh, who was one uh, of the first to advocate for uh, patient uh, safety. Also for the diverse uh, part of my uh, uh, lecture, I was uh, inspired by the work uh, done by uh, uh, our society to uh, develop and increase the visibility uh, of all spectrum of our activities. And uh, this resulted in the successful support of all our national societies in the name change from ESA to ESAIC. Let's start by talking about the safe part first. Of course, this year we're celebrating the 10th anniversary of the Helsinki Declaration. Now, what does that mean to, to you and also to the anesthesiology community? It makes me proud of being an anesthesiologist. Uh, this declaration uh, represents a shared opinion on uh, what is currently uh, worth doing and uh, practical to improve patient safety. This anniversary um, provided um, uh, a timely opportunity to uh, build on the uh, global efforts on uh, uh, patient safety. Uh, we convened this year in March a policy uh, summit for patient safety to raise the policymakers' awareness of patient safety in uh, uh, European Union. And also we set some recommendation to help member states to reach the targets for 2030 uh, for safe uh, surgery and anesthesia for all. How would you say that the role of uh, anesthesiologists has changed over the last 10 years or so? And has the sort of increased prominence of intensive care medicine and of course the role of the anesthesiologist in COVID-19 affected things? I don't think that the spectrum of uh, roles of the anesthesiologist did change uh, much. However, the European uh, training requirements uh, in anesthesiology document published by the European Board of Anesthesiology in 2018 clearly stated that the practice of anesthesiology has significantly changed towards more holistic competencies in intensive care medicine, in perioperative period, in critical emergency uh, medicine and pain uh, medicine. And actually, intensive care units were um, established uh, for the first time by anesthesiologists in Denmark in the 1950s when the Europe was ravaged by the polio epidemic and uh, this year uh, showed I may say uh, the rest of the world why we are here we are here to save lives and we are made for this uh, uh, moment we worked in uh, during this pandemic in unfamiliar in difficult uh, circumstances in emergency rooms in operating rooms in ICUs and awards and we emphasize the meaning of teamwork which is one of our uh, strengths we have passed the test and we have to take this opportunity and uh, reposition our uh, specialty for the future. Let's take a little bit more of a closer look at the diversity element of your lecture. Um, where are we today in ensuring that anesthesiology represents the patient populations, especially in leadership roles? Although women are more than 70% of the greatest majority of the workforce, health workforce, uh, less than 30% uh, women uh, reach position of chief executive, full professor, board of uh, societies, uh, uh, healthcare facilities, uh, professional organizations. And um, I um, also congratulate the society for launching this year uh, the first uh, committee on gender equity. And I'm happy that that this committee uh, promotes uh, individual opportunities for everybody. So to, to finish up, you're asking 
uh, anesthesiologist to celebrate their strengths. What would you say are the strengths of an anesthesiologist and why is it important to do so? We have a vast array of knowledge and skills in the management of acutely ill. We are champions in uh, um, teamwork and uh, interdisciplinary collaboration. We are leaders in patient safety and we advocate for uh, gender equality and uh, equal opportunities for everybody. So I think that uh, we have to celebrate uh, uh, these strengths and then I think we have to, to, to speak up and to take the lead on this road of uh, patient safety towards zero harm uh, during uh, the perioperative care and gender equality. Professor Filipescu, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for the kind invitation.